Hey, welcome to Alum House Sound. My name is Dave, and today we're going to talk about AES 50 routing. So welcome to the channel. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. And if you're just finding this video for the first time, I'm just excited that you're here. We try to share the knowledge of things that are digital mixers. And most of our videos pertain to the X32 and the M32 platform. And we get questions from all over, whether it's the comment section, people sending emails directly to me through my con uh, contact card on the website, or on Facebook groups. But this one comes from a subscriber on the, on the comment section. And let's see what this says. This says, hey, Alum House, can you show me how to patch user output for AES 50? Is it the same or on input user? Can you do one for one? Let's say output one from AES 50 and the next output is from local. How is the patching on user output? So. While it's not exactly clear what they're trying to uh, uh, what they're trying to solve for, let's go through the routing section. We're going to use X32 Edit as a platform just to kind of talk about this. Obviously, everything uh, is able to be done on the console, but on the computer, it's a little bit easier to see the routing. There's a matrix that we can view, and we'll see if we can answer this question and maybe any that you might have as well about routing in the AES 50 space. So let's go ahead and dive into X32 Edit. We've got that opened up here on the screen. And as you can see, we just have a Steen that is in here, happens to be some drums on the left and bass guitar in the middle, acoustic guitar. Regardless of your setup, let's talk about the routing. Up here in the top right, we can find our routing screen. And when we click on that, we get this matrix that pops up. Let's just give a quick review of this routing. Now I've got a whole video that covers the routing. I'm gonna link that down in the description in case you want to check into that. But today, just as a brief overview, on the left we have inputs. That is where we determine anything coming into the console. Uh, inputs, and we also have the auxiliary ends here as well. In this case, noted down here, just below that matrix routing. Now the next thing we have get is going to be output. So we have AES 50. That is determining what goes out your AES 50 back up to your digital stage box in terms of outputs. Card, what goes out to your card, so on and so forth. Uh, the only thing that is back to inputs, when you get to the right hand side and you've got the user ins, that's where you would customize user ins if that is what you need. Now we will end up using the user out as well for this discussion, but let's not get there yet. Let's say in our, um, in our setup that we have come in and our, our inputs here all come from AES 50A. Maybe in this case, you've got a digital stage box uh, like an S32 up on stage or a DL32 that's giving you 32 XLR inputs up on stage. You can run that connection across AES 50, in this case, AES 50A. You could also use the B input and you can mix that up as needed. But right here, our inputs map one through 32 from the digital stage box. The next thing we want to think about is our actual outputs. Let me close this. We're going to come back in just a second. But let's close this and talk about over on the right hand side, we have our mixes. We have a main mix bus, which is called left right. We have various different mix buses over here, which happen to be uh, the first handful in-ear monitors, one, two, three, four, and five are in-ear monitors. There's a broadcast mix here, bus, uh, whatever that is, seven and eight. And there's some P16 buses, which are used to get audio uh, specifically mixes up to the P16s. They've even got a 70 volt system, which is kind of neat for an auxiliary part of their facility. And then we're used to seeing our four uh, buses that go to the built-in effects racks. Now, with that in mind, we want to get signals out of the console and to certain locations. If we need any of these to go to AES 50, let's say that we have our amps on stage uh, or our routing to our, uh, our main speakers on stage. 
we need to get the left-right signal out of the console and up to the stage across AES-50. These in-ear monitors are probably going to run and be racked, the wireless transmitters are probably going to be racked in the same rack that also houses your digital stage box. So let's run those back up as well. The P16s, the broadcast, those probably don't need to go up. But let's just take an example now where we're going to keep our routing as IEM1 here that says Becky is going to go out, output 1. The next one, IEM2, is going to go out, output 2. That seems normal, but we're going to also just keep a placeholder on bus 7 and 8. We're not going to send our broadcast, but let's just keep that in mind and keep it nice and consistent as we send this up. So let's go back to our routing. We're going to take a peek now at the outs 1 through 16. When we click on out 1 through 16, we get this matrix here. This matrix now helps us route uh, what mix needs to go out what output. So your outputs, you've got 16 outputs on the left. You can send, as we are, uh, all 16 up to the AES-50 realm just to get us started. And we get to determine across the top which mix we send where. So we talked about mix bus 1 going out output 1. We see that right there. And that follows suit, mix bus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now 7 and 8, we don't need to send that out. So let's take those and just turn those off. 7 and 8 don't need to go out. Uh, 9 and 10 are P16s. We do have our 70 volt system going out. So we catch back up here with bus 11. Uh, bus 12 happens to be a floor wedge that could be set up really quick to be on stage. Then if we look at these bottom ones, it looks like um, the mono center channel is being grabbed and that's going out bus uh, or output 14. And then our left right are the standard 15 and 16 outputs. Now, if you've got the small platform console like I do behind me, the compact, the producer, the rack, any of those, then your left and right is usually going to take up output seven and eight. But if you've got a stage box, you've got more bandwidth to, uh, to send outputs and build outputs. So this is our setup right now. These all relate. Uh, these are our outputs one through 16 that we have. The next thing we wanna do is send these across uh, AES 50. So we come over here to AES 50 and this is where we determine what leaves our console and goes back up to the stage. Well by default what we see here on the right is outs 1 through 8 and 9 through 16 are all being sent to the digital stage box. Well that's great because now what we can do is we can patch anywhere we need to on stage output 1, 2, 3, 4, don't forget 7, 8 are turned off, 9 and 10 are also turned off. So those channels on your outputs of your stage box would just not be utilized. No big deal. Uh, they're available, so if you needed to build additional mixes in the future, you can use those. But for right now, that's what's set up going out AES-50. Now that handles mostly the default settings. The next thing we want to talk about is what this uh, comment requested, which is what if we have to take uh, an output from a AES-50 or a local. Now that begins to get a little confusing because local outputs are all set here in the console as well with the XLR. This XLR tab determines what outputs leave the actual console, the back of the physical console. Again, the small platforms are only gonna have eight outputs. The XLRs, in this case, only pertain to the physical output. So when you have the big full-size console, then you do have 16 outs included. Uh, the small platforms only have eight. So this is where your XLRs are set. But remember, this is routing the actual outs that we set, and those outs are set here under out 1 through 16. So what does this look like now if we needed to change the order of these around to better suit our needs? Let's say we don't want to have this gap of 7, 8, 9, and 10 in the middle. Let's say we want to get rid of those and scoot everything up so that the first, however many that is, 
uh, quick math, 12. The first 12 outputs on our digital stage box are gonna be used. The last four will be unused. How would we do that? We would use the user outputs. So in this case, we need to start by setting and building our user outputs. So we go to the far right, click on user out, and now we have this matrix view. This matrix view gives us the ability to custom set uh, different, different varieties and orders of our outputs. So in this case, we have outs on the left-hand side that pertains to uh, what is leaving the console. And then we have if up top, all of the different inputs, uh, local inputs, AES50A inputs, B inputs from the card, auxiliary inputs, but then we see the section called outs. Well, that's one through 16. Those are the outs that we set in the out one to 16 tab just a few minutes ago. So if we wanna customize the setup, let's click on out one through eight. And now we have a matrix here. We can set the order. And right now we could come down and what we see is one and then two and see how down here it's setting us up to have mix bus one and two then we have three, four, five, six. Remember, seven and eight, though, are the live stream, and we talked about not sending those back up to the stage box. So let's shift here, come up to the right, and click on nine to 16. And now what we can do is come down here, nine and 10 are also blank. So we're gonna pick up with 11 and 12. We'll finish out now by coming down here, clicking underneath out nine to 16, and we can now follow through. We've done 11, 12, now we can do 13, 14, 15, and 16. Notice how the naming convention continues to follow, and we can now see our mono center channel, our left, right uh, outputs here. Nine looks like it is not used, and maybe I'm just blanking on that. Let's see here, seven, eight, My brain is not remembering. Let's just go peek here. Let's look at out nine to 16 and see what we set as output nine. Okay, this is what we're seeing. Out 13, out 13 is in fact turned off. So if we don't need that, we can come back over to our user outs. We can bump up if we de reselect our uh, nine to 16 outputs and we can bump everything up so that our main left and right is moved up right there, and then this output 12 is turned off. So we now have output 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 on our stage box not being used. The last step in the process though, we've set our outs first, then we built our custom user output, then we can go to AES 50, and here AES 50A, one through 16 is what we want to change. We have to scroll this little scroll wheel all the way to the right. And all the way over here, we're gonna see user outs and we can just choose one to eight, nine to 16. So that takes the mixes that we have in the console, it sends them to outputs through the out one to 16. We then set a custom order of those in our user outs on the far right. Finally, we came into the AES 50 tab and grabbed that bulk of one through 16 in our user outs, and we're gonna send those back up to our digital stage box. So that gets you set up. Now, what would you do if you wanted to take auxiliary ins that are on the back of your physical console, and let's just say, send some of those up to the stage for whatever reason? Well, we've still got five outputs that we can send signals, or five uh, channels, if you will, we can send signals, back up to the stage, we can come down to our user outs. We click on this, we've got this second group here of nine to 16, and we see these available uh, outputs. Well, if they're coming in auxiliary in on our console, we can find the auxiliary in right here. If we click up in this box, that's gonna scoot this to the left. And now we've got the availability that we can say, okay, maybe auxiliary one, two, and you can see these populate right there, three and four. 
we want to send those back up to the console. Now this would, because we're choosing them in the user outs, and the user outs are what we're sending back up across AES 50, those auxiliary in signals are going to go directly into the console through your AES 50 connection back to your stage and they're going to come out those XLR outputs up on the stage. Now again, I'm not sure why you would do that. That's for you to decide in your specific use case. But hopefully this is giving you a little bit more idea of how to use the AES 50 and the routing that we've got here. Well, there you go. That's a bunch of information about routing within AES 50. Uh, as we talked about, you've got the input side and then everything else is going out uh, in that routing section for the most part, outside of auxiliary ends, I get it. But hopefully you found this video helpful and you feel a bit more confident now to tackle your specific routing needs as you grow and expand your setup into having a digital stage box. Well, if you've got questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and uh, I'm always answering questions down there. If you wanna start a conversation outside of YouTube, feel free to find my website down there as well. You can find the contact card and just reach out to me directly that way. But again, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you found this video helpful. We'll catch you in that next video. Peace.